Welcome back to my tutorial series on mapping for the Source Engine. Today we'll be going over entities in a little bit more detail. The very first thing I'll be showing you how to do today are a few things that I forgot to show in the last video. First, you can use the left and right bracket keys to make the grids bigger or smaller so you can have smaller and more detailed brushes. However, I recommend just about always having the grid at 32 or 64 units. This helps with map optimization, and it makes the map neater to view in Hammer. You can also group things together with Ctrl plus G, so that when you select one thing in the group, it selects all of them. You can also use Ctrl plus W to toggle ignoring groups. Entities come in two different varieties, point entities and brush entities. Point entities are things like lights, items, spawn points, NPCs, and props. Brush entities are things like triggers, funk underscore details, and buy or bomb zones in Counter-Strike. To make a brush entity, select any brush in your level that you want to be part of the entity, and hit Ctrl plus T. This brush is now an entity. Change which entity it is in the same manner as point entities. Double-click on it, go under Class, and type in what you want it to be, and then hit Apply. You can drag them around or resize them in the 2D views. Note that since a brush entity is still an entity, it can never be exposed to the void under pain of death. Additionally, if your brush has displacements on a face, I'll cover those in a later video, they cannot be an entity, or your level will not compile. There are a lot of different types of brush entities, and they vary from game to game, so I'll only be going over some of the more commonly used ones. Funk underscore details are used to optimize the map. Make any small brush a funk detail unless they're exposed to the void. These are the default entity for most games. Trigger underscore hurt hurts anything that touches it. You can change what it hurts under flags and how it hurts under class info. Funk underscore buy zone is used to make a buy zone in Counter-Strike. Any player within the brush entity can buy things at the start of a round. Funk underscore bomb target is used to make bomb zones in Counter-Strike. Bombs can be planted anywhere inside these entities. Funk underscore fizz boxes are my favorite. They're essentially physics props in the form of a brush. You can move them, break them, etc. Funk underscore door is a sliding door entity. You can change its direction, speed, and sounds it plays under class info. For best results, if you want a brush entity to be invisible and non-solid, for example, bomb or buy zones, then use the texture tools slash tools trigger. Point entities are made by clicking somewhere in the 3D view with the Entity tool. You can change their class, attributes, etc. the same way as brush entities. Again, there's hundreds of different point entities across a ton of different games, so I'll only be going over some of the more basic or commonly used ones. Light underscore environment makes light come out from any sky texture in the level. Change its color to the color of the sunlight and change the ambient to the color of the sky. Mess with its angles to adjust the angle of the light. By default, it points in an undesirable direction, just parallel to the ground. Light is a light. Light goes out in all directions from the entity, and you can change its color, intensity, etc. to fit your level. Info underscore player underscore start is a spawn point entity. I already covered spawn point entities in the last video, so go watch that if you haven't. Prop underscore static is an immovable object. You can change its model under class info, and then in world model. Prop underscore physics is an object that is affected by physics, and you can move them around. Item underscore suit is the HEV suit for Half-Life 2 and its episodes. You pick up the suit and any other item entities when you walk into them. NPC underscore zombie is a headcrab zombie from Half-Life 2. In the actual level, they walk around and attack you, but they start out at where the entity is placed within Hammer. Entities are a lot more complex than what I've said in this tutorial, so check out the Valve Developer Wiki for more info on them. I'm going to put a link in the description. You should now have the basic know-how to make a simple map for Half-Life 2 or CSGO. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Make sure to like and subscribe if you liked the video or want to see more of it, and have a good one.